Okay, welcome back. Today what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be showing how to assault a position and the reason that we're going to show this but it isn't really clear how one actually goes about it. Let's look at our situation as it is right now. With the terrain, again, we are not showing the trees and we have not put out any of the walls or fences or anything of these fields. So when we put those trees out, this is going to look a little different. So what we've done is we put in the earthworks along this town, which is reminiscent, again, this environment's reminiscent of the Atlanta campaign of 1864. So we put in our earthworks. Now, contrary to what we do sometimes in World War II, as we say, we don't really care where the opening of a field is located because if there's a border around a field, bushes or wall or fence, it doesn't matter if we show where the location of the fence uh, opening is. We can show a house, no problem, but we don't really care about where the wall opening is. Um, mainly because vehicles and men can jump those walls and we're talking about a scale dramatically smaller than, than this. This is a regimental scale. So um, we could also say that the reason that there aren't any fences and walls and such uh, could be said that the defender of the area has actually dismantled them. The fields remain of course, um, but for now in defending this region they immediately needed to defend it and they say we can say they dismantled all the fences. Walls, of course, not, but um, they would prepare their defenses and clear as much of the terrain as possible. Again, if you're a student of the American Civil War, you know what happened at Franklin and at Nashville when Hood sent his uh, divisions against prepared positions. It was disastrous. Well, is it true in the game that we're playing uh, by the rules, is it actually true that it just simply cannot be done? More than likely that's, that is the case. It simply cannot be done because by the time you were to reach a prepared position, um, you're going to be so damaged, there's simply not going to be any way that you're going to be able to carry the position. However, in Franklin and or Nashville, the situation did uh, transpire where there was a breakthrough in a road area. So this could be a candidate for a breakthrough. Now why is that? Because any kind of a breastwork or fortification of any kind, remember this is still a working town. It hasn't been abandoned. There's still people living here. There's still working farms. I mean, it's an urban you know, and, and town environment. Um, so the, this would probably just have some kind of a badass or a temporary block uh, on this road and um, this would be a point of exploit. Now here we can see a little bit of a difference. The defender has put up earthworks all along this side, and including one here for our artillery position. So this road is definitely uh, represented as being completely closed off. So in reality, what's probably happening here is that there may be an opening, we just don't show it. Because closing off this road would be very bad for the commerce and the people who live here, of course. They have to carry on with their lives until the enemy begins to, enemy begins to attack. So up until that point, we might be able to say to the players, well, actually, there is an opening here. Similar to this, this is actually an opening because it needs to be realistic. Now, again, again, we analyze this terrain, and here's what we see. This could be a problem. This is a bridge over a creek. Also, we have already said the creek is fordable anywhere. It simply does cause a factor of fatigue in units crossing, but this bridge is an issue. Well, we don't care about how tall it is. We don't care if it's an obstacle or an obstruction. And when it comes down to actually playing the game, players are probably going to say that is a significant obstacle only to units that are actually right here and the firer is right here. And also, uh, in regard to this, by the way, um, it may appear as if there's only one portal for the cannons to shoot out. Clearly, uh, that's not within our level of detail. This simply is like everywhere else in here. You can put the cannons anywhere. These are simply other in our inventory of breastworks. Now, if you wanted to, you could designate that this is exactly the opening, the location for the opening for the guns. Uh, but as to how many guns are going to be positioned there, that would have to be up to players to decide. Because the models themselves kind of dictate the scale. Unless we want simply just to ignore it and say it's all breastworks. 
wherever the cannons are positioned, they're positioned such that they have a field of fire created when they made the dugout. When they piled up the earth, they created it such that the cannons would have a field of fire. So just ignore, like we said in World War II when it comes to the gate, just ignore where all these openings are. Treat the whole thing as breastworks with cannons wherever they are, having a field of fire that would be appropriate. Obviously, if a cannon is, and this, by the way, again, is a full battery of cannons, if the cannons uh, are placed here, their field of fire is going to be restricted, right? It's only going to be like, say, from this edge to that edge. It won't be, if cannons were placed here, they won't be able to shoot this direction. They won't be able to shoot more than probably this line of hexes right here. So this would be the extent of their field of fire right there. If you were to say, that that represents an actual location of where artillery is located. It's simply up to the players and the level of detail you want to employ. As you can see over here, we have a fortification that's actually got multiple uh, slits in it for the cannons. Because this was made at a time either we wanted to have it look like that, to look accurate, or we were actually playing on a scale where a cannon represented a cannon which would be unusual for us to do, but the fact is that this has been sculpted that way. So you see we have an outer works here. We have potential break, potential break. Uh, kind of a isolated, if you want to call it rideau, or a um, isolated portion of the works with an opening here. And then we have another set of works here, probably to compensate for that large opening because of the rail line and the road. And then the rest of the breastworks carry are the earthworks carrying on. Now these may or may not be breastworks. These are actual earthworks. This is piled up dirt with a uh, series of uh, wood uh, tree trunk uh, um, supports all the way around it to give it strength. They may just be breastworks, but in this case, if they were going to be breastworks, we should probably just show what they are. And the difference, of course, breastworks are debris piled up. Earthworks is actual dirt that has been dug into this type of shape and reinforced with wood, um, just as, uh, which is to say uh, timber um, uh, walls. So uh, probably, again, I'm not entirely sure about this, but in the creation of works, what would happen is the, the, the trees would be cut uh, or acquired, the lumber would be acquired, the wall would be put up in its location, and then the earth piled up on top. The uh, troops would dig the dirt and pile it up on top of those standing logs. It's probably the way it was done. And then it was reinforced and finished off. So that's what we're looking at here. Now, oh, back over here, you've noticed, obviously, we've got these Confederate units. Now, these are just units we placed out here just so that we can say to ourselves, what's the Confederate commander looking at when he sees this? Well, like Hood, Longstreet, anybody who's conducting some kind of an assault, the first thing you're going to do before you put your men in, before you position your guys, you've got your men arriving into the battlefield region. Prior to that, and as we know from various reports, the commander-in-chief of, of this battle would kind of position himself to say, what am I looking at here? And this is, what, this is what he's looking at. He would say, okay, where's the exploited positions? Where is the location that can be exploited in this scene? That's the first thing he's going to say. And not now, well, of course, uh, beyond how many troops do I actually have to carry this out? Hood perhaps wouldn't care, because uh, he certainly didn't toward the end. Um, but uh, the fact remains, the, uh, the analysis would be done about weak points and strong points and what would be the best to attack. Obviously, frontally, uh, this is what the, uh, the, uh, the defender expects, uh, so this area is fairly clean. By the way, there's another uh, rideau placed out here, which would be uh, uh, the first thing that would cause a problem. But no doubt what would happen here is that this would be heavily shelled and probably abandoned. Uh, so it's more than likely this would be just a place for reconnaissance for the, uh, for the defender. Uh, more than likely, there's no chance that that would survive. The, uh, the enemy would place artillery up here and simply destroy it, uh, blast it to pieces. Um, so, or not, they might just simply bypass it. Uh, and there may, in fact, be fake guns there. Okay? So the commander looks at this region and says, how am I going to deal with this? How am I going to deal with this situation? Uh, what have I got? What's he got? And what can I do to uh, carry this situation and win the day? So positioning his forces, if this was, well, as this is a war game, the player would say, okay, the uh, attacker is going to enter from this side of the table or, you know, and or this corner down here, 
that's in the camera view. Yeah, this corner right here, right, or this corner and or this corner and or all the way around. Because look, when the uh, defender is in position, he's pretty much, you know, that's it. So the attacker can probably say, okay, I've maneuvered my men to go all the way around to that end, and we're going to try and take this position here. This is probably a good spot because there are some, there is some cover potential there. We'll get across here, probably get across this bridge and exploit this. So if we demonstrate here and make, this, make the opponent believe we're attacking there with everybody, uh, he might just thin out his lines elsewhere and reinforce this area. Again, the defender doesn't have an unlimited number of resources. Okay? He's only got so many men, as well as the attacker. So the attacker might also say, by the way, you know what, how about, uh, let's try here. So if we can get our guys to move down this side and then position them to attack, perhaps this might be a better way. Well, considering, look, we've got some forest up here. Okay, we've got some, well, there's a potential for a disastrous assault, but it's only like maybe two moves, three moves to reach those uh, earthworks. And then we can probably get in there uh, hand-to-hand -hand combat and carry those works. We'll see how that would transpire. With artillery support, perhaps artillery being brought up through this mountainous area, or if that's not possible, I guess we'd have to be found some other way to get there, but getting the guns to a position where they'd be able to shoot in order to support the assault. Clearly, uh, the more likely position for the artillery is once you get it up here, of course, right, this could be an artillery position, but that's going to be a target for all his guns. So the Confederate commander, in this case, the Confederates are attacking, uh, he's got some decision process to make. Where, maybe here. Put the guns here, put the guns up here, shell this region, and maybe attack over here. Look at the parameters. This fairly good cover here, not so much here, but then again, maybe this would be a possible exploit right here. You could do a brigade column attack right here. A simple wave assault, well, I shouldn't say simple, but a wave assault pattern of lines of troops attacking this way and this way. Frontally is really unlikely, but then again, it did happen. Uh, again, referencing Hood uh, at Nashville and Franklin, frontal assault. Because it wouldn't be expected. The opponent would say, well, look, I've got so many guys up here uh, and so many cannon attacking frontally would be, you know, a suicide. Well, is it? And that's what we're here for. Is it really suicide? Yes, history says yes, but we can't do history. It simply can't be done. So we have the limitations of our interpretation, uh, which we call the rules of war games. We interpret how things happen so that it, the situation, the scenario is playable. That's the whole idea. Is it playable? Can you actually not simulate? We can't call it a simulation, but can you have a game, a board game, if you will, that kind of simulates the restrictions and the parameters and everything else involved about assaulting a position. How is it actually going to work? Again, think Pickett's Charge. Can you simulate Pickett's Charge? Dum, 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 dum. Can you actually represent the men getting up there? Can it be done based on what the rules of the game are? And do the rules need to be adjusted so that it is a little bit more realistic? Can the men actually make it there? By the time they get there, they're completely destroyed. Is that real? Is that realistic? So these are the questions we're going to be investigating. I've done another one like this where we talked about assaulting a position uh, that was the 54-millimeter troops I had. And this is going to be done with 15-millimeter troops. So it, it's going to be very interesting to see, and we're going to follow it exactly as the rules say. We're going to follow the sequence of events, the sequence of the turn, and activation and everything. In this case, we'll have to have a discussion about activation because generally in, this, in the Hex Command gunpowder universe, you are talking about uh, uh, activating on brigade. So this is, say it's a brigade, activate that number, activate this, activate this. So the commander might say, okay, these guys are going first. That's number one, this is number two, this is number three. So the first one to activate would be this brigade, and then this brigade, and then this brigade. That is to say if this was the type of uh, if this is the order of battle, if this is the way the commander wanted to do it, which may in fact be the case. I don't know. We'll think about it. We'll talk about it. We'll see. We'll, we'll analyze the situation a little bit further and the commander will make a decision as to what to do.